Hi, this is Mrs. Chavez. We're starting the last section of Societies at the Crossroads, and we're going to be looking at the Japanese Empire. Well, in 1853, there was a fleet of U.S. warships that steamed into the Tokyo Bay and demanded permission to establish trade and diplomatic relations with China. Representatives of European lands pretty soon joined the U.S. in uh, Japan. Heavily armed foreign powers intimidated the Tokugawa shogun and his government, the Bakufu, into signing unequal treaties, providing political and economic privileges similar to those obtained earlier from the Qing dynasty in China. Opposition forces in Japan used the humiliating intrusion of foreigners as an excuse to overthrow the um, Tokugawa shogunate. After restoring the emperor to power in 1868, Japan's new rulers worked for the transformation of J Japanese society to achieve political and economic equality with the foreign powers. The changes initiated during the uh, Meiji period turned Japan into a political, military, and economic powerhouse of East Asia. So this is where we're going to see the transformation of Japan. Japan, at this time, um, was ruled by the shogun from the Tokugawa family. Now, the Tokugawa shogunate was actually uh, founded about 250 years earlier, in 1603, when Tokugawa Ieyasu and his allies defeated the um, coalition of the feudal lords, and they began to establish dominance over the um, warlords. But while Tokugawa became dominant, receiving the title of shogun from the um, powerless emperor, he, didn't, he did not have to establish a completely centralized state. Instead, he replaced opposing feudal lords with relatives and allies who were free to rule within their domains under very few restrictions. The Tokugawa shoguns prevented alliances against them by forbidding marriages among the other feudal lords, family members, and by forcing them to spend every other year under the shogun's eye in Edo, which is now Tokyo, the shogun capital. They lived in a kind of organized hostage system there. It was the third shogun, Tokugawa Lemitsu, who enforced isolation from much of the rest of the world in the 17th century believing that influences from abroad, meaning trade, Christianity, and guns, could shift the balance that existed between the shogun and the feudal lords. He was right, and he was proven right two centuries later when change came in the form of Commodore Perry's ships. Now, poor agriculture, output, famines, and high taxes, hardship, all of those things uh, were faced by the daimyo and the samurai. And attempts at reform by the Tokugawa government actually did some good. They canceled the daimyo debts and they abolished merchant guilds and they compelled the peasants to return to cultivating rice. On July 8, 1853, Commodore Matthew Perry of the United States Navy, commanding a squadron of two steamers and two sailing vessels, sailed into Tokyo Harbor aboard, the, aboard his ship. Now Perry, on behalf of the U.S. government, forced Japan to open uh, to enter into trade with the United States and demanded a treaty permitting trade and the opening of Japanese ports to U.S. merchant ships. This was the era when all the Western powers were seeking to open new markets for their manufactured goods abroad, as well as new countries to supply raw materials for industry. It was clear that Commodore Perry could impose his demand by force, and the Japanese had no way with which to defend themselves, and thus they had to agree to the demands. Perry's small squadron itself was not enough to force the massive changes that then took place in Japan, but the Japanese knew that his ships were just the beginning of Western interests in their islands. Russia, Britain, France, and Holland all followed Perry's lead and used their fleets to force Japan to sign treaties that promised regular relations and trade. They didn't just threaten Japan. Their combination... Uh, their navies on several occasions came and defeated and disarmed the Japanese feudal domains that defied them. The Meiji Restoration. This political revolution basically restored the emperor to power, but he didn't rule directly. He was expected to accept the advice of the group that had overthrown the shogun, 
and it was from this group that a small number of very ambitious and patriotic men from the lower ranks of the samurai emerged to take control and establish the new political system. At first, their only strength was that they, the emperor accepted their advice, and several of the powerful feudal lords' domains provided military support. They moved quickly, however, to build their own military and economic control, and by July of 1869, the feudal lords had been requested to give up their domain, and in 1871, these domains were abolished and transformed into prefectures of a unified state called Japan. The feudal lords and the samurai were offered a yearly stipend, which was later changed to a one-time payment in government bonds. The samurai lost their class privileges when the government declared all classes to be equal, and in 1876, the government banned the wearing of samurai swords, and the former samurai cut off their top knots in favor of the Western-style haircuts, and they took up jobs in business and the professions. The armies of each domain were disbanded, and a national army based on universal conscription was created in 1872, requiring three years military service from all men, samurai and commoner alike. A national land tax system was established that required payment in money instead of rice, which allowed the government to stabilize the national budget. This gave the government money to spend to build up strength in the nation. Reforms, influences, and the social order. Well, the picture that you're looking at right now is Ito Hirobumi. Um, he, we're going to talk about some of the stuff that um, he um, contributed. The abolition of feudalism made possible tremendous social and political changes. Millions of people were suddenly free to choose their occupations and move about without any restriction at all. And by providing a new environment of political and financial security, the government made possible investment in new industries and technologies. The government led the way in this by building railroads and shipping lines, telegraph and telephone systems, three shipyards, 10 mines, five munition works, and 53 consumer industries, making sugar, glass, textile, cement, chemicals, and other important products. This was very expensive, however, and it really strained the government finances. So in 1880, the government decided to sell most of these industries to private investors, therefore encouraging um, activity through subsidies and other incentives. Some of the samurai and the merchants who built these industries established major corporate conglomerates called zaibatsu, which control much of Japan's modern industrial sector. Constitutional government and a remodeled economy. Although these changes were made in the name of the emperor and the national defense, the loss of privileges brought some resentment and rebellion. When the top leadership left to travel in Europe and the United States to study Western ways in 1872, a conservative group argued that Japan should reply to Korea's refusal to revise a centuries-old treaty and with an invasion. Um, this would help patriotic samurai to regain their importance, but the new leaders quickly returned from Europe and reestablished their control, arguing that Japan should concentrate on its own modernization and not engage in such foreign adventures. So for the next 20 years, in the 1870s and 1880s, the top priority remained domestic reform, aimed at changing Japan's social and economic institutions along the lines of the model provided by the Western nations. The final blow to conservative samurai came in 1877, Satsuma Rebellion, that's what it was called, when the government's newly drafted army, trained in European infantry techniques and armed with modern Western guns, defeated the last resistance of the traditional samurai warriors. With the exception of those few samurai outbreaks, Japan's domestic transformation proceeded with remarkable speed and energy, and the cooperation of the people also. This phenomenon is one of the major characteristics of Japan's modern history. And that ends our chapter 31. Uh, you'll be taking your test on Monday, April the 13th. Uh, coming up is the Easter weekend. I hope you have a very good weekend and enjoy yourself. Remember, I will be grading on Easter Sunday. Hey, see you uh, next week in our conference.